What's up, YouTube? Today is Monday. It is Labor Day. So all across the country, people are celebrating, probably having barbecues. It's turned out to be a beautiful day. It's actually really hot over here on the East Coast. Um, in Eastern Parkway, Brooklyn right now, there is a big, huge, I want to say probably across this country, the biggest Caribbean festival where um, all folks from across the Caribbean get together to celebrate Labor Day, up and down uh, Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn, New York. So that's what's going on. But this video today, um, obviously everyone knows that there was a big, huge, I think an eight hour funeral service that went on for the late uh, Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. You had uh, entertainment, people in the entertainment industry, sports industry, and of course, the politicians who probably have ambitions to want to be um, recognized as if they are someone famous, they were there as well. So anyhow, um, obviously first, the kudos is gonna go out to Jennifer Hudson for blasting out some great ballots. You had Fantasia, you had Yolanda Adams, and also uh, Ariana Grande who, if you did watch some uh, some of the um, the footage, they were actually showing, at least I saw on my Twitter feed, that, you know, there were people touching Ariana in a funny little way. But either way, um, neither here nor there. Um, of course, unfortunately, um, politics had to show up at a funeral, a funeral service for such a powerful voice in music. Um, I would understand if... Um, Perhaps if Aretha Franklin was a vocal person that way, that she was speaking out politically, and if she was somebody who regularly took positions that she stood on a platform and was like speaking out against the government or speaking truth to power in some form or fashion. But that is not who Aretha Franklin uh, was. So the mere fact that you have these um, these politicians, or like I like to say, you know, the ones of color who are outside of race baiting, they are profiteers. They profiteer. You know, they make a profit off of race baiting. And so none other than Professor Michael Eric Dyson, who you've probably seen him on MSNBC. You've probably seen him on CNN. Um, he constantly is someone who's always called upon to talk about race and uh, race relations in America. He kind of talks like a rapper, like maybe he wanted to be a rapper one day. Um, he just, you know, it's the way that he speaks. He has this way um, that he uses words. So in his speech, actually, at the service, he goes into talking about orange apparition. Here we are, we're talking about Trump. I don't even know how he even led up to that. He was talking about a bunch of other things, but of course, here he goes, um, he called him a leech. He said he was a doppelganger of deceit and deviance, a dictator and a fascist. So, I mean, really, this is a funeral service and we're spewing hate at a funeral service. I think it's just, they have reached an all time low. This was pathetic. This was tasteless. I think the queen of soul is like, she'd be twitching in her grave right now. What happened to the R-E-S-P-E-C-T for the Queen of Soul? What happened to that? I think all of that was lost. The whole point of why people were there. Because, of course, those are the sound bites that get played and regurgitated over and over again. This was tacky. It was highly inappropriate. And I wonder how her family really felt about this. I felt this was so disrespectful to the queen of soul. Like seriously, is this the way that we want to remember her? That we put these fake wannabe people who probably had no relationship to her, that they take this opportunity when people are grieving and they're supposed to be rejoicing to then just use their tongue to spew this kind of hate at a funeral service. I thought that was really, really tacky and uncalled for. It was ugly. And it shouldn't have happened. And um, I'm embarrassed that um, obviously even when you have such a time like this, that this is the way that they chose to, um, to so-called honor 
uh, Aretha Franklin. It was unfortunate. Tacky, you had um, Al Sharpton taking swipes, Maxine Waters, like at some point in time they said, you know, we're with you and she did some like, like she's a victim or something. Like really? That was tacky. So, um, you know, having said that, I wish if I'm going to say his name, hopefully I say his name, his name right. The black man that's running against uh, DeSantis in Florida, Gilliam or Gilliam, either way, that guy. Wouldn't it have been nice if he just didn't take the bait uh, on CNN with Chris Cuomo? Why couldn't he just take the higher road? Why does he have to engage to try to reaffirm um, that, yeah, you know, DeSantis was talking about, he said he blew the dog whistle. So he blew the dog whistle and you responded. Did you have to respond? No, you didn't. And I think when we look at the whole picture and put it into context, you knew that he wasn't saying anything that remotely had to do with racism. But yet you use this opportunity and then you go on a show and then you double down on it. You knew that he was talking about policies, but here it is. Now, all of a sudden, it's an issue of race. So I wish DeSantis the best of luck in Florida. I can't say much about this Gilliam Gilliam guy because in all reality, I just don't have much to say about him. I just, you know, the headlines went on for days about this monkeying around. And Gilliam, Gilliam, I wish you would stop monkeying around. Why don't you make a real debate and argue about the issues, argue as to why your policies and where you stand are better than DeSantis. And if you can't do that, then you shouldn't be in the race. Really, seriously, it really is a battle of ideas and who comes to the table with something um, that best fits the needs and wants of the American people. So please stay away from race. And I think you actually took yourself down a couple of notches by actually engaging in that garbage. So no respect there. Um, I think I did read on Twitter that Candace Owens is going to be out there also campaigning on behalf of DeSantis. I think that is awesome. That's fantastic. So again, DeSantis, I wish you the best of luck. And Candace also, I wish you the best of luck um, bringing people and bringing people and making it clear to people about what's really going on, what's at stake, and why this election is so important. So with that said, guys, I hope everyone has a wonderful Labor Day. Um, everyone take care, and I will see you soon. Bye.